And here we are, it's day four. I hope you've enjoyed these last couple of days. I hope you've had the chance to look your fears, your grief, and your troubles dead in the eye, and you've found a special strength within. Today is the day we get to put this all together and reveal the three sacred parts of who you are and how you can use them to transform your life. This is the very core of what makes our life experience what it is. And what's even more amazing is you. You are the center of it all. We are three in one magnificent beings who have the ability to put beauty into our very existence. However, we're also creatures who have the ability to make our lives hard, stressful, painful, and even a living hell. Today will be the day of truth discovering. After you learn this and understand it to its depth, you will have the knowledge of how to live a life you love, you desire, and how to honestly solve any problem in your life. You already have the tools and you already use them. I'm just going to show you a new way to use them. Not only will you gain control and the power you need to heal and deal with your loss, but they will help you thrive in your life. I have included a PDF you can download and have it in hand while we talk about this. I wouldn't be sharing this with you if it didn't work. Happiness, freedom, and peace of mind, it can enter your life. You deserve it. So let's put it all together and get started. Let's talk about the first part of you, your mind. Did you know, as we grow in our mother's womb, the brain and its nerves are one of the first things to form? It's truly amazing how life is procreated. If you remember in day two, we talked about three different parts of the brain, the brain stem, the limbic system, and the frontal cortex, and how we are physically and emotionally impacted when we experience loss or when our fight or flight response is induced. We also talked about how our brains like patterns and how the brain cannot tell the difference between what is real and what is imaginary. What do you think? is one of the main purposes for our brains. Many say to think. Yes, this is exactly right. But, but why? Why do our minds think? They do this to survive. We think to survive and function in life. But wouldn't you agree with me, sometimes our minds can get a little out of hand and cause us more harm than good. They can keep us up late at night worrying about the future or reliving a traumatic event that has occurred in the past. They can even cause us to say things we don't mean. They even tell us sometimes we aren't good enough or we're never going to get better. They tell us to just give up or don't you dare talk about your feelings. Our minds have the power to make our lives a living heaven or a living hell. Once something happens in our life, it starts talking and telling us what it thinks. How many times have you been talking with someone and you're politely listening and then all of a sudden your mind, it drifts off into left field wondering about something else or it starts judging the person that's talking. Have you ever experienced this? Sometimes our minds have a mind of its own, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We have the power to control our minds. We have the power to test our thoughts and judge if they're really true or not, and if they're empowering or harming us. Some of the best advice I ever got was, if you believe it is good, then it will be good. If you believe it is bad, then it will be bad. It really is that simple. That is the name of the game here in life. So if you label something as bad, 
How do you think you will feel? Bad, right? No one wants that. When it comes to our minds, we must be conscious of the thoughts we think and who is in control, you or your mind. To heal, we have to challenge our thoughts. Our brains just want to survive and function. They don't have the slightest interest if we're happy or not. So in any given situation, we must test our thoughts. When we're in a bad state, we're stressed out, we're sad, or just feeling like crap or missing our loved one, we must ask ourselves, what thoughts am I thinking? What thoughts am I thinking? Am I thinking about the past, the present, or the future? Once you've gathered that, then you can choose what to do next. You can either choose to continue to have thoughts that you're having. You can either continue to have those thoughts and be controlled by your mind, or you can change them for a better, for a better truth that serves you. To win at life, you have to be conscious of what is harming and what is helping you. This leads me to the second part of you, your body. The mind and body are connected in so many ways. One cannot properly function without the other. I mean, the mind tells the body when, what, and where it can and can't do something for goodness sakes. If we didn't have a body, then the mind wouldn't have anyone to boss around. And if we didn't have a mind, then the body wouldn't have anyone to tell it what to do. But I'm gonna tell you a little secret, gosh. I'm full of secrets today, aren't I? You are the boss of both of them. You have the ability to tell the mind, to tell the body what to do. For example, I bet right now you're breathing, but you aren't aware of it. Your body is just breathing on its own because the mind is telling it to do that. But now, now that I have your attention and you're focused on it, you may have breathed just a little deeper. Take a second and just take one deep breath. <sighs> what just happened here is you told your mind to tell your body to take a deeper breath. Did it listen? Our bodies are a gift because they are our way of experiencing life. They are what connect us to life. With them, we can see, we can hear, we can taste, we can smell, we can touch. We experience life with them while our mind gives us the language, the meaning and the feeling of it all. So beautiful, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> but wouldn't you agree with me? Sometimes life doesn't feel good, it stinks. It doesn't feel real. It hurts us, or we just feel uncomfortable in it. Yes, this happens to everyone. But here's another secret. If our bodies aren't being cared for or functioning like they're supposed to be, they aren't acting like happy bodies. They're acting like sad bodies. Would you then agree life probably won't feel or be good? Would you agree with me? If someone asked you what a happy person looked like, what would you say? Do they smile or frown? Breathe shallow or deep? Slouch or st sit up and stand up straight? Talk fast or slow? Is their head up or down? Are they active or sedentary? What do happy people do with their bodies? Now, what would you say if I asked what a depressed person looked like? Would their head be up or down? Would they talk fast or slow? Slouched or standing up straight? Breathing shallow or deep? Be active or sedentary? 
our bodies can be a physical representation of what is going on inside of us. Just by looking at someone, you can just tell if they're angry, sad, happy, stressed, or relaxed. So with all this being said, I'm going to show you one of the many ways you can change how you feel. First, you need to identify what you're feeling and what you're doing with your body. To do this, you need to ask yourself two questions. What am I doing and what am I feeling? What am I doing with my body and what am I feeling right now? After that, it's simple. Change something that you're doing with your body. Feel something different. Our bodies, they were meant to move. So if you're feeling lazy, tired, sad, go for a walk, clean your house, dance, get your blood flowing and your heart pumping. If you feel low in energy, take 10 deep and slow breaths in through your nose and out through your nose while you expand your stomach as you inhale and then suck it in slowly as you exhale. Our bodies, they love oxygen and good posture. If we're sitting slouched, moving slow, breathing shallowly through our chest and holding our head down frowning, how do you think we'll feel? I can tell you right now, just by changing your physiology, you'll feel different. I challenge you to go jump on a trampoline and see if you can't smile. To heal and to feel great in life, we have to become conscious of how we're using our bodies. And this leads me to the third part of you. But first, I wanna ask you a question. What makes us conscious of something? How do we make ourselves conscious of something? What is consciousness? Why do I ask such weird questions? <laughs> the third part of you is your soul. You are the soul who is the experiencer, the feeler, and the doer of your life. As the soul who holds the home of your body and the soul who uses your mind to translate between you and life, your soul is the third piece of you who makes you whole. You are the soul who controls your consciousness and what you are aware of. You are the soul who gets to give life events different meanings and you are the one who gets to decide what to focus on. You have the power to control what you experience in your life. You get to choose what you see and feel and for how long you see and feel things. From your soul, you have the power to heal your life and transform it into extraordinary things. Like I said, if we think something is good, then it will be good. But if we think something is bad, then it will be bad. As the soul, you get to give the meaning to things and life events that occur in your life. And here is the final secret for the day. You can change the meaning you give events in your life at any given moment. As the soul, you guide your mind, your body to where you want. And ultimately you guide them to where you want to be in your life. Our soul can give us heaven on earth or hell on earth. With it, we form our beliefs, our choices, our health, and the quality of life we have. Why not use it for good while we still have time? Do you want to live a life of suffering or do you want to live an amazing, fulfilling, and extraordinary life while you can? Only you can decide what happens in your life, no matter what circumstances do occur. You're the only one who gets to decide how you feel, what you do, and what you think in it. You are the maker of your reality. Why not try to make it a good one? So next time, when you're feeling down, reliving something in the past, or faced with a situation in your life where your feelings get hurt, or you feel discomfort, or you don't know what to do, I want, to, I want you to ask yourself, two questions in that moment. First, what am I focusing on? 
And second, what meaning am I giving this? What am I focusing on? And what meaning am I giving this? For so many years of my life, I gave my dad's death a terrible meaning, a meaning that did not serve me. I relived the experience of his tragic death over and over, and I put my body through hell. I lived in the past, and I gave his death this meaning. My dad is dead. That's not right. I don't deserve to be happy. <sighs> this shouldn't have happened. I'm never going to be happy again. My life is messed up. With this meaning, do you think I could have ever healed or gained happiness again? For me, the answer is no. The day I saw my dad's death differently was the day my life started to change. I learned to accept it for what it was, a part of life, natural. Sure, it didn't meet human standards and what I expected my life to be, but it did meet life standards. Death is death, no matter the cause or when it happens. And I know some of you may not like hearing this, but it is my truth. I took my old meaning and I changed it to one that served me and life. And I also became, a, became aware of what I was focusing on. Of course, it was sad and it still is sad today. And yes, I still have bad days and I miss him so badly I would do anything, but I have learned to accept it and thrive in it. I have found balance in my grief. In the past, all I focused on was a negativity. I had a poor me victim mentality and that my life was going to be bad for the rest of my life because my dad had died and I didn't want that to happen. It didn't meet my life map, my blueprint of what should and shouldn't happen. But fortunately, by the grace of God, instead of choosing to live the rest of my life as a victim of it, I chose to use it to help me and life. I chose to use it to lift me up. I gained a meaning that helped me heal and bring love, purpose, and happiness back into my life. I chose to be a better person in life in honor of my dad. I decided I was going to live the rest of my life, giving everything I got to be a kind and good human in honor of him. Instead of seeing my life as a punisher or a bully, I chose to see that my life was for me. Life is for me. I asked myself what I was focusing on and what meaning I was giving things that have happened and are happening in my life. When I did this, I was able to find my truth and follow a pathway of healing. And please know, these two questions, they can be used in any given circumstance in your life. It doesn't have to be that drastic. It can be used when you're arguing with a family member or a friend. Ask yourself these two questions and just see what happens. I believe at the end of the day, all we really want is to be loved and to give love. By having this knowledge now, you have the opportunity to change your life at any given moment. You just have to say yes. Change any one of these things, what you're focusing on, what you're thinking, and what you're experiencing with your body. And I promise you, your life will never be the same. You get to choose how you feel, what you think, and what you experience and see in life. Never forget that. All you will ever need is right here. You are the core of your mind, body, and soul, and you are the one that writes the story of your life. This completes our four days together. I hope you found it helpful. All I will say now is, I'll see you when I see you. I had a dear friend of mine. Her name was Vicky. I called her Vicky Bondo. She was my best friend, a nursing sidekick and mentor. She had a heart of gold and she has so much wisdom. She always had something to say too. If you were her patient for the day, you would have been touched by this glorious, gorgeous angel. 
her smile, it just lit up the whole room, and her laugh, it just made you want to laugh. And if you were hurt, she made you feel safe and that you were going to be okay. We made a good nursing team and spent so many days and nights together, working in the hospital, delivering babies with one of the most amazing doctors in the world. Go Dr. Bill. We handled patients in need on the floor and we also helped people who came into the ER. But no matter what hour of the day or night we got off, we always made sure to say, see you when I see you. It was our way of saying bye, but it wasn't a kind of bye for good. It was a bye until I see you again. Unfortunately, a few years back, that was the last thing we shared with each other. I'll see you when I see you. Sorry. <laughs> her and her husband were in, a, were in a head on collision with another driver and no one survived. She was a beautiful soul and she impacted my life tremendously. She is one of the many reasons I choose to love and to do what I do. We all have so many amazing people that impact our lives for the better. And I'm forever grateful for them as I am for you. If you feel like you need more, I have a paid interactive video series where I go more in depth on what we've talked about in these videos and we discover your hidden destiny after loss. So if you're interested in learning more about this series, please click the link below and it will take you to the page with all of its details. I will see you when I see you, hopefully on the next page. Bye.